Everyone knows superpowers are real. Every superhero, every supervillain, they harness the power they have to do incredible things, huge, unimaginable things. And when used for good, they can reach heights that were previously impossible, often to create a change or save the world. And Wait work a to... second. What's up? Reamer, super strength is not a superpower. Uh, I made this list. Good. I have super strength. You don't have super strength. I'm Icelandic, okay? Okay. I got Nordic fire in my belly. That's not a real thing. I once ran something called a marathon. Ever heard of it? A half marathon. And I work on these bad boys every day. <laughs> Crunches, <laughs> oblique re-ups, and tuna from an aluminum can. <laughs> Any more questions? Not really. <laughs> Didn't think so. Superpowers, by definition, introduce something unique, an advantage or a special ability to do more. But the real advantage is when you start to combine these things. Combining superpowers and superheroes results in protecting justice or defeating Sorry, evil. Sorry, one more thing. Grima, you put force powers? What about it? She's right, it's not a real superpower. Really? Where even did you get that? Actually, it's uh, by a crystal that I... It's the same with web development, except in development, superpowers take on different forms. There's front-end superpowers here for building user interfaces, animations, back-end superpowers for reading and writing data. That means content, assets, users, payments, and logic superpowers here that glue these things together. Powers that let developers actually define behaviors and integrations. Are you saying, hold on. What's up, Kramer? Are you saying that these developer things are as powerful as literally having lasers shoot out of your eyes? Yeah, totally Almost, powerful. yes. Wow, all right, let's continue. Developers can piece together all this stuff in different ways to build amazing things. And that's the secret. All the greatest things, the best, the most powerful, some of the most transformative stuff on the web, all these things are built with these developer primitives, these building blocks. But by combining them, developers can create almost anything. That's how you build a site like Netflix.com or Twitch.com or Airbnb, Unsplash, Pinterest, even an Apple.com. These superpowers have led to the creation of pretty much everything we see on the internet today, almost all of it. Those who wield these powers can create something that can be brought instantly to millions or even billions of people. Developer building blocks are among the greatest superpowers in the world. But it wasn't always this way. Back in the 1990s, most of that stuff didn't exist. If you think of web development sort of like building a building, back then every developer started on the ground floor. They'd cobble together the parts they'd need to build maybe a two or three story website, never ever reaching the heights we'd see around today. Back in 97, to build something like today's apple.com, you'd quite literally need a miracle because almost none of today's building blocks existed yet. Even if you could build it, trying to run a site like this would likely catch a computer on fire. What? No, 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 no. That's, that's not fire, it's vintage. That's how you know it's thinking. As time went on, new technologies emerged. Things like libraries and frameworks, powerful browsers and toolkits. Developers could now start building at the fifth or sixth or even seventh floor. At each and every turn, it got better. New developers could stand on the shoulders of giants, no longer needing to start their work from scratch. And all the kinds of stuff they built could reach new heights because of this. So maybe you couldn't build today's apple.com out of the box, but you could certainly piece a lot of it together and code your way to sort of match most of it. And the Dreamer. I put it out. It wasn't even smoking anymore. I saved the day, again. Through all of this, the more building blocks you had access to, the more you could write or develop with, the higher your starting point and the taller you could build. But the problem still remained for quite some time. Only those with all this power these incredible coding superpowers had the chance to build these things at all. Then came Webflow, a deceptively simple concept. The super secret business plan wasn't to create another WYSIWYG. It was take these core developer primitives, these superpowers, and build a development environment around them, not avoiding the principles of web development, 
but creating an interface that leans into the power of it. An interface from which you could build and directly manipulate the very things that used to require writing code by hand. And with that, the goal became even clearer. Give designers the same coding superpowers developers have. So instead of piecing it together, starting on the ground floor, or even the sixth or seventh floor, you're starting on the 50th floor. That's not a feeling unique to those who use Webflow, by the way. Software developers know it well. But that's where the bigger work begins. Expand the field of development to empower way more people to create for the web. Put simply, bring developer superpowers to designers. Wait, just designers? No, lots of people. What about someone named Bob? Bob? Bob. Yes. What about Mario? Yes. Riker. He's from Star Trek. They don't have the internet in Star Trek? Fine. Actually, a small correction. He was promoted to captain. Ah, Milton. Yes. Spraknikus. What about... Crumbs... What about who? What about... Broom. It is getting a bit complicated. Let's just say everyone. 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 Good, but on the title card. That makes a lot more sense. Perfect. Good morning, everyone. Ooh. Welcome to Webflow Comp 2022. It's a lot of twos. Uh, we have hundreds of people here in San Francisco and thousands joining us remotely across the world. It's so amazing to have you all here today. I just heard somebody say November 9th, more like flow flow November 9th. Uh, and I feel exactly like that. There's so much energy here. And we have so many exciting things to talk to you about today. So let's jump right into it. Today is all about the power of these building blocks. Some of these are technical. Some of them are really creative. But what they all have in common is one thing, that by combining them in different ways, we unlock so much more power. And that's what we're building with Webflow, the power to build and maintain the best, the most creative, and the most performant sites in the world. And it's not just us saying it. Throughout the world, so many people here, we're seeing countless stories of people using Webflow to transform their businesses and even their livelihoods. And Webflow is becoming the platform for people to build and scale their businesses on. There are now over 7 million sites on Webflow. I can't believe this. Almost half of these in the last 12 months alone, including some stunning examples of creativity and power. And the momentum around Webflow is only accelerating. You can see it in this room. Originally, we launched Webflow because we wanted to build a tool that lets people visually develop simple sites that output clean code. That was it. But since then, it's grown into something that is used to build and run some of the most powerful sites in the world. And we're seeing it adopted by hundreds of thousands of freelancers and agencies, service providers using Webflow as a development platform to build powerful sites. And for clients, I think you'll find corn in this room. Uh, people making a living, just so many of them full-time Webflow developers. Something that we're starting to see, not just on job postings, but resumes and CVs, which is amazing. And we're seeing a huge shift in larger and larger companies coming to Webflow to streamline their entire development process. More and more businesses are switching to Webflow, which is empowering their in-house teams, designers, marketers, to build and maintain world-class production sites that are beautiful and interactive and so much faster, not just in the sites themselves, but in just the speed and efficiency in just getting these things to market. This is really, really transformative. And people are switching from platforms like WordPress, Adobe, Experience Manager, Drupal, from all of these companies. Things that have, these things have been around for decades and really changing it. But that's not it, because we're also seeing Webflow used by students. All over the world, people are using Webflow because 
it uses some of these same principles, so many of the developer primitives as, as people writing code by hand. And people are using it to learn development and kickstart, kickstart their careers, not just in design, but in development as well. So we're seeing something huge happening with students. So whether it's freelancers or agencies or in-house teams switching to Webflow and Droves or students across the world using it to hone their skills and start their careers, Webflow is gaining the reputation as the most powerful way to build and launch world-class sites on the web. So today, we, yes, thank you. It wouldn't be happening without all of you. So today, we want to talk about superpowers, like the video mentioned, across four different categories in Webflow. Development superpowers, collaboration superpowers, community superpowers, and something new that we're calling super superpowers. <laughs> And to talk about the first superpower, I'll pass it on to McGuire. OK. Development superpowers, three things to talk about here. UI, user interfaces, data, and of course, logic. Let's start here with logic. Logic brings the power of automation natively in Webflow. As it says on the slide, logic brings the power of automation natively in Webflow. So how does it work? There's three building blocks. Triggers, like a form submission or an incoming webhook. Conditions, if this is true, do this. If not, whatever. And of course, actions. This is where it gets fun. What we want to have happen as an output based on the rules we define. You can do a bunch of things. You can modify CMS items. You can send an email, even an external call, an external service or API. You can use a call to connect to an API using an HTTP request. Casey Catalbis, as an example, made a podcast site. So when people fill out a form and they fill out their location, they get early access to tickets when the podcast announces a new event live in their city. Aylberry here did a great example. They made this system. It's a sort of project request uh, ticketing system for their agency's website. Clients can use this. They can submit new requests that auto-populate the site so Aylberry can keep track of clients and keep everyone in the loop within one place. And finally, this third example, Bailey Fisher here created this job candidate tracking system on Blackbeak's site. And it's incredible because people, candidates, can go in and apply to an open Webflow designer role. And the candidates are tracked and they're rated according to their qualifications. And the Blackbeak team is notified when a, when a strong candidate comes into the pipeline with, and you can't make this up, illuminating a Philips Hue light bulb. It literally flashes. But that's logic. Logic, of course, is in beta and available, of course, to anyone who signs up. So check out logic if you haven't already. OK, let's move on to user interfaces. Now, we'll be showing all of this, of course, on desktop. But as you know, everything developed in Webflow supports responsive layouts. That means larger devices, tablets, mobile landscape, mobile portrait, and of course, dynamic island. Now. <laughs> We look at user interfaces in a pretty simple way. We look at these incredible things, these amazing things that are built on the web. And when we see something that we like, whether it's a rebrand, a new Apple product launch, we're obsessed with seeing how is it built? How is it put together? We want to find out what core technologies, what UI superpowers are their developers using to build these incredible things. The secret for UIs in Webflow is that it's not, power, it's not powerful because it's a new way of developing. It's powerful because it takes all those same development superpowers and it just exposes them in a direct interface. That's it. So you have all your HTML, all the elements, all the nodes you can add. You have your CSS, of course, all your styling and layout, and of course, Webflow interactions. Usually you do this with JavaScript. You'd write it by hand, then connect a library to set up and. Uh, the triggers and the animations. With Webflow, of course, you just declare all this stuff directly. And the things that people are building with Webflow are remarkable, incredible interfaces, powerful, interactive experiences that people are developing using the Webflow Designer. Today, we're introducing a new user interface concept in Webflow. And of course, this is all about building and maintaining production-grade UIs, because today, not only are we announcing, but we're launching components. 
So, what is this all about? Well, there are five phases to what we're calling the Webflow component universe. For phase one, components are essentially the next evolution of symbols. So at their most basic level, components let you design something once and then reuse it throughout your site. Navigation, a card, a form, or a footer, whatever. And even though you design it once, you design that component once, you can change the content right on the canvas. This is super powerful. Not only that, but you never ever have to manually create text overrides anymore. <clears throat> because with component properties, things like text properties are automatically created and linked. Wait till you see this. And it's not only text properties. You can also show or hide an element or different elements within instances of each component. A ton of control there. Of course, you can nest. You can also, like with symbols, you can nest components inside of other components. And for the first time, you can use, you can connect components dynamically. You can connect the elements inside a component so that you can collect your dynamic data and connect it to your component in a collection page. So here's what a component looks like. Here's what it looks like when you're editing. Here's where you can add properties. Uh, to modif modify stuff on a component, you can see you can override your, you can set properties on button text. You can also control visibility of the button in this case, which is inside of the component. Of course, here's how we can edit content right on this instance, right on the canvas, directly within the element. Here's, of course, like with the symbol, here's a navigation component used on two pages. Notice how, of course, we change the order on the contact page, and it updates on the home page as well. And if we change the text, of course, it keeps everything neat and consistent. So that's what they look like. Let's take a look at components in action. All right, live demo. OK, so here we are in a website. It says Zen in your pocket. Let's scroll down, and we have a card right here. Of course, this card is not yet a component. Let's change that by right-clicking, and we're going to create a component. We'll cleverly name this one card. And now we've created experience the power of, look at that, we got a little notification here letting us know the power of components. OK, so now that we've created the component, of course, let's go over to components and we'll drag that card. Of course, we can put it anywhere we want. Let's put it in the card wrapper next to the other one. Now, notice how, of course, everything's matched and consistent. So if I edit this component, of course, if I change the DOM order in something like that, it matches. We know this, it's even a match. Let's undo because it looked better before. But here's the real cool thing. If we escape right here, let's go out of our component, I can just double click without creating an override or anything. I just double click and change the text on the second instance of the component. And that's it. So you design your component once, of course, and you can use it wherever you want, and you can update the content right on the canvas. Let's look at another example. So second demo here, got a kind of two by two design. So this is pretty neat. So what we can do in this instance is, of course, we can edit the component. Let's go in and let's add something to our component. So let's look in. Of course, we have card content. Let's add a text block right inside of the card content. And we'll just say something like, offer ends very, very soon. And just like we'd expect, you see that instance absolutely everywhere. We see that. Uh, maybe we can do some styling here. So let's go over and make some changes. So we have 300, 400. Let's go bold. We'll make it a little bit smaller. And why not? Letter spacing and all caps. All right, so we have all of those. Now, what if we want to control visibility on that offer end soon we just created? So we can just, at any time, we can click on the text block and create a component property for visibility. And just like that, we now have these controls unlocked. So maybe on this one, the offer doesn't end very, very soon. So we can just turn that off. Maybe on this one, we want to turn it off there. So we can control visibility properties on each instance. Here's another pretty good example. OK, so in this instance, we're actually using a component to generate, to keep track of, to keep this design consistent for the hero section. So we have this card. Of course, there's a lot of elements inside the card. We could open that up. We can look at it. That's pretty good. But what if we want to use this in a dynamic instance? So if we go to our collection page, we have case studies template. Let's open that up. And of course, here's a section. It's blank. And inside the section is a container. Let's go ahead and add that card. Let's add that card that we have right inside that container. 
So we'll place it right inside. This isn't a surprise. I mean, we have a lot of controls here. This is good. So we have this. But here's where it gets really powerful. We talked about linking to our collections earlier. We can just take this H1 heading, this heading right inside uh, the component. And without doing anything but going to element settings, we can see this little purple plus. Let's plus it. And let's link it dynamically to the name field. And just like that, we're pulling in dynamic data. But it's not just text. Check this out. Hero image, let's select that. We'll go to the plus, and this time, let's pull it from hero image. And just like that, we're pulling straight from our collection. <clears throat> so that is components. The Webflow components universe, of course, has these five phases. You saw phase one, initial launch. For phase two, we're going to be adding more components, uh, more power to components management how you manage, how you preview your components to organize these UI building blocks. We're also adding support for connecting components on any page using collection lists. For phase three, phase four, and phase five, the ability to reuse and interconnect these things becomes its own superpower. In phase three, more power and control. This means modifying styles per component instance. This is huge, style overrides, and just as big, workspace level components. Reuse things like footers. You can reuse things like footers across multiple sites in Webflow. And of course, keep the content and keep that branding consistent across all of them. And we're not gonna talk about phase four today. We will say phase five, of course, has Loki season three, <laughs> the next Guardians film, and of course, Captain America, New World Order. So components are available to everybody in Webflow, and you'll see them right in the designer later today, and that is components. Now, we're going to be coming back to components a little more later on in the keynote. Can't wait for that. But up next in UI is something that's pretty great, and that is variable fonts. Variable fonts are like the shapeshifters of typography. Matthew said that in a meeting yesterday. It had to be the first bullet we put on the slide. Only the font file, so instead of one font file, so instead of loading up a bunch of different weights like 400 and 500 and 700 and 900, you only load one file. And very often, a variable font, because of this, has smaller file sizes than loading even two or three weights of different fonts loaded separately, which of course means faster load times. But it's not just weight. You have control over all kinds of properties, different axes like width, optical size, slant, wonky is actually one of the axes on some of these. You can just have these custom axes for everything. I'll show you in a second, it's really cool. So with that, rather than just talk about it, let's take a closer look at variable fonts. All right, here we are. Basic site, it's just a body set to flex, everything's centered, you can see. Let's go in and select this little heading that says superpowers. Right now it's Arial, inspiring. And let's go in and change it. Let's see, what fonts do we have? Let's do Francis. So let's just choose this. You can see we have our weight, but we're not gonna touch that right now. Instead, we're gonna go down to font variations. Check this out. Add axis, and instantly we have control over weight, and we can just drag and directly manipulate. <laughs> What if we want to change something else? Let's add a second axis. So here's optical size. We can control the optical size and another axis and control softness. So it's not just static, though. This is, pretty, this is pretty great because we can set this once. What if we want, though, to change what it looks like on hover? So let's go in. Let's mess with that. Let's really tweak our softness. Let's make it thinner here. Let's go to the weight, pop that up. Let's change our optical size. There we go. So if we hit escape now, we have the variable font on hover. We're all thinking the same thing. It's not animated enough. Let's change that right now. <laughs> we all know how to do this. Let's go in to transitions. And just like you can transition any kind of CSS properties, we're going to go in and change font variations. We're going to create, get ready for this, let's create a custom easing curve right here on stage. We're going to do it. Let's make it wild. Yeah, there it is. And watch this. You ready? Look at that. We have so much fun with this stuff. It gets so much better, though. Check this out. So I'm going to add a heading underneath superpowers. We're going to write super superpowers. Check the spelling. All right, so it's another heading. 
Let's choose a different font. Let's see what else we have in here. So we have Francis. We can do something like Dynapuff. We have Dynapuff loaded. And each of, the, each of these fonts are really cool. They have different axes. So you can go in and this one, we can see what they have. Let's go to font variations. Of course, we have weight here. So we can control weight. Let's see what else. We have width. So we can control width. So let's start maybe a little narrower like that. Let's start with a, a little bit bigger of a weight. We can do something like that. Maybe, let's just actually clear these styles. Let's try a different font. What if we want to try something like Enter? So this is a variable font for Enter. Let's see what controls we have here. So let's do weight. Let's start really thin, go really thick. It's not enough. Let's go to interactions. So, of course, interactions, we could add something on the element, on the page. In this instance, let's go to the page trigger, and we're gonna control, we're gonna control what happens when the mouse moves on the screen. So let's create a continuous interaction, mouse move and viewport. On mouse move, we wanna perform an action. Which action? Well, we wanna play this mouse animation. And let's call it mouse animation one. And so we want to control along the x-axis. So let's say it's 0%. We want to add a font variation. And we can add our axes here. Let's hit plus. Let's have the weight super thin when it's over on the left. And of course, on the right, let's go and add one more font variation. We'll make it really thick. So check this out. Turn live preview on. And instantly, we're adjusting live on the canvas. So I said, we, I said we had fun with this. So Skylar Kitchen and Matthew Munger put together this demo. I got to show you. This is great. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this, uh, this up. This is fantastic. So what they did, this is all native in Webflow. This is just a tabs component. And what's happening is there's an interaction that's running. So based on the mouse position, you're able to control. This is just a published site. This isn't even in the Webflow designer. This is a published site. And you can control this one, which is along an axis called Pro. Let's switch to Plus. Look at this. We have this happening as we move our mouse. And of course, what happens if we press Ultra? We got Ultra. So. So let's add to this list, because we got a lot here. Of course, uh, we talked about support for states. We showed that. Support for transitions between those states. And of course, interactions using variable fonts, timed animations like page load, continuous animations like we saw based on maybe where your mouse is or where you are as you scroll through the page. And we'll be launching this, of course, in beta. And we're doing this next month. Fonts touch a lot of stuff in the Webflow code base. So we want to make sure it's rock solid so you can get your hands on it and start building with variable fonts in Webflow. That is variable fonts. That's everything in UI. What about data? Of course, in Webflow, we have three parts of our data infrastructure. CMS, e-commerce, and of course, users. Let's look at the CMS. Of course, people develop with the Webflow CMS for a pretty straightforward reason. Instead of developing a page and getting it right, then duplicating that page dozens and dozens of times, then realizing you want to update the structure or the design, only now to have to go back and update each and every instance of that design, only to end up realizing you had it right the first time, so you go back and update dozens and dozens of pages again. You just define or you import your data in the Webflow CMS, you design once, and the magic is when, of course, you bind that data. You link your design to that data. Or in the sophisticated variant of that same exact thing, the magic is when you link your design to those data. Or in the Star Trek variant of the same exact thing, the magic is when you link your design to Lieutenant Commander data. And <laughs> We're seeing individuals and teams they're managing incredible sites. They're designing dynamically. They're using this to build some of the most powerful stuff we've seen, some of the most powerful CMS-driven sites in the world. And we think businesses, we think artists and designers, we're seeing extraordinary value derived from using this powerful, from using this very serious tool. So, over the past year, we've been building a brand new storage architecture for the Webflow CMS. And of course, it builds upon a lot of the improvements we've launched around designer performance and improved content management flows. Of course, we shipped content filtering in the Webflow CMS. We shipped bulk updating. So if you have a new CSV, it'll just ask if you want to update just the data that's changed. We shipped, of course, bulk publishing. So you can select and you can go in and publish multiple items without publishing everything. We unlock support for more CMS collection items, going to 20,000, 50,000, 100,000, even well beyond that. And as announced about eight or nine minutes ago, we can now link up components 
to dynamic data and collection pages. Not to mention the fact that CMS has four fewer syllables than saying and 22 fewer syllables, excuse me, 22 fewer keystrokes than typing content management system. But the other big thing we've unlocked is this. As we've built out a more scalable CMS and data infrastructure, not only does that unlock building larger sites, which it does, but it also unlocks Webflow's internal teams so they can work on something big, something that's one of the most highly requested features in the history of Webflow. Because now that our team has prepared the CMS for scale, we now have the core foundations in place to invest heavily into native support for multi-language sites in Webflow. Let's take a closer look at what we're building. First off, what we're building is native to Webflow. You'll be able to localize static content as well as dynamic content through the Webflow CMS. But it's not just text content. You'll be able to localize images, full support for localizing alt text. You can swap out page settings, SEO titles, descriptions, slugs. We're also building out localization APIs. So you can programmatically provide translations through external tools, external translation services, like Weglot, since they're doing a ton in this space. Now, why is this important? Well, if you're a freelancer building a small site or you're a huge org doing global business, you'll be able to plug in, you'll be able to leverage our APIs to plug in to wherever your translations already live. Of course, the goal here is to get your multi-language site up and running faster. So if we're starting in English, we can switch our canvas, of course, to something like French. Then we can, trans we can translate static content directly on the canvas or through element settings. We can provide localizations for images and alt text. And of course, we can switch to our CMS and also edit dynamic content to provide localized versions of those as well. So multi-language is a massive effort. And our team is building the best possible visual development experience for multi-language sites, along with powerful APIs to connect to existing translation services. So we're working on getting multi-language in your hands as early as we can this coming year. So again, Three parts in our data infrastructure, that's CMS. Let's talk e-commerce. Of course, e-commerce sites in Webflow are built on the same infrastructure foundations as the Webflow CMS. It just applies them in a different way. So you can create and you can sell products, services. Webflow e-commerce is still relatively new, but we've already seen businesses sell over 5.4 million products on the platform. And our biggest e-commerce our biggest e-commerce release yet, Webflow Memberships, adds on the users functionality. So with users, you can define different experiences based on who's logged in. So a couple of things to talk about here today. We're adjusting some of our e-commerce plans, so we're gonna raise the number of items supported in both of these tiers. So starting today, e-commerce plus is going from 1,000 to 5,000. Advanced is going from 3,000 all the way up to 15,000. We're also announcing three new things specific to Webflow memberships. First, today we're enabling access to the memberships beta in product. So it'll be available to everyone in the Webflow designer today. You'll see users right in the UI, just like you see e-commerce and CMS. Second, when we first launched the memberships beta, we had an early upper limit of 300 users and then 1,000. But because we're scaling our data infrastructure, we're now 20xing that. And the team's just getting started here. But the third is a big one, element level gating. This means you can control which elements are visible or hidden based on whether someone's logged in or not. So if you want the experience to change, if you want new users, users to see one thing and you want logged in users to see a different thing, you have all of that control. So element level gating is coming out next month and the in product beta plus increased user limits, of course, are shipping later today. So, that's data. Let's recap what we've talked about so far in development superpowers. We talked about Webflow logic. Of course, add the power of automations natively in Webflow. If you're not already using it uh, and you haven't explored it yet, head on over and sign up for the logic beta. In UI, we covered components, of course, available today. In data, we talked about the new scale of the CMS. We got a sneak peek at multi-language in Webflow. Teams are actively working on this right now and we got increased item limits in Webflow e-commerce. Finally, memberships, of course, is in public beta today, available right in the Webflow designer for everyone, 20 
times increase in users, and of course, element level gating based on whether someone's logged in or not. That's available next month. But we are just getting warmed up today because this is only the first superpowers section. Because I'm super excited to pass it over to Jay-Z and Sada and Greemer at the Webflow headquarters to take us into the next section, collaboration superpowers. All right, collaboration superpowers. All over the world, teams are using Webflow together to build and maintain production sites. This includes freelancers who are working with contractors, agencies who are working as teams on design and content, and businesses of all sizes who rely on Webflow as a critical part of their design and their marketing and development workflows. What we're announcing today builds on our past two years of improving collaboration in Webflow. We made it so that others can edit content while someone else is designing. You can see where other teammates are working. You can hand off design control from one teammate to another. This was the first time multiple people could actually be in the designer together. And this laid the technical groundwork for multiple modes of editing within Webflow. Earlier this year, we released Workspaces, simplifying how you create and grow teams. We also introduced roles and permissions. You can now define who can do what, so that people who remain nameless, like Greemer, can no longer wreak havoc on some of our sites with millions and millions of visitors. These people can now be locked down with the right permissions, and we can limit what they're able to do. All of this is built so people can work together in the Webflow Designer. Today, we're announcing three new collaboration superpowers, starting with Guest Role. If you're a freelancer or an agency that works with clients, you're probably familiar with the following workflow. Sada? Thanks, JC. I run my own agency. Greemer is my client. I'm building Greemer a world-class website. He says, Wow, I'm so excited to have a world-class website. Riveting. Now that I've built it, I'm ready to transfer the site to Greemer. Did you get it? Yes, I did. My client clicks on the link, which prompts him to bring the site that just made into his workspace. Do you see your site? I see my site. How do I change everything? Did you try making it pop? I don't even know what that means. I really like the color, but can you change it? Change it to what? Why is it not like I said it should be? Because you said it should be something else. I have more final, final changes. That's literally what you said last time. I don't like it, and I don't know why. Can you tell me what you don't like about it? I'll know what I want when I see it. What do you want? Can't you just copy and paste it in? Copy what in? You said you'll deliver the copy. The text. That's what I mean, copy. And paste. I don't think copy means what you think it means. Can you find one that looks less like a stock photo? It's a photo of you. Who's Lauren? Wait, what? Who is she? Sarah? I have no idea what you're talking about. Tell me. Tell you what? Who's Lauren Ipsum? And there it is, the reality of client management. But because I need to make these changes, we need to do one of three things. One, my client would need to upgrade his workspace and add a seat. Two, he has to share his username and password. Or three, I have to ask him to transfer the site back to my agency's workspace each and every time they want me to make a change. I'm pretty sure you're just trying to bill me for something else. Back and forth we go. Transfer, transfer, transfer. JC? Thanks, Ada. Greemer. And that's the last time we have to think through that workflow because guest role. Any workspace like this client here can invite a freelancer or someone at that agency to that workspace with full design access as a guest. For free? For free. I like free. And this makes collaborating with your clients far easier. You don't have to share Webflow workspace passwords anymore. Your clients can configure any billing on their site plans, and you can still go in and make site changes. This includes design changes, DNS, site settings, whatever you need. And through it all, the client's workspace is protected, which means that the guests won't have access to confidential workspace settings. The result is so much better. Sada? With agency or freelancer guest role, my client can invite me to his workspace. I invited you to my workspace. All the changes my client wants me to make, I take care of them behind the scenes. DNS, publishing, design tweets. Are you done with the changes? It's been like two minutes. Soon, Greemer. 
the result of working this way, now I have the power to collaborate with my client through their workspace. And my client feels more empowered than ever. And you update on those changes. Check it out. This is so good. I know, agency or freelancer guest role is that powerful. Because I can be a guest in my client's workspace, they never have to pay for my additional seat or share Webflow login credentials or transfer sites back and forth. I'm literally giving your agency a five-star review and paying the contract in full, in cash. Back to you, JC. Thanks, Saturn Greamer. That's guest role. The second thing we're announcing is site-specific access. So you can control which sites anyone in your workspace can access, whether they're a guest you invited using guest role or a member of your workspace. Sada? There's two examples here. One is between an agency or a freelancer and their client. The other is in larger orgs that use Webflow in an enterprise workspace. First, let's go back to Greamer. Fine, but I'm playing a different client this time. You probably noticed, but my accent is very different. With larger clients with multiple properties, multiple sites, they often want to collaborate with agencies and freelancers on some projects, but not all. I only want you to have access to my real estate business, my law firm, and my art gallery. Sure. But my Cologne empire is off limits. Your what? I can't tell you, top secret. Is that your? Proprietary scent. <coughs> it's a musk. It smells foul. <coughs> it's a pungent odor. So with site-specific access, Grimer, honestly, that's terrible. I extracted it from elk glands. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. With agency or freelancer guest role, site-specific access can help control which sites those guests have access to. That's right. Okay, that's for the relationship between an agency or freelancer and their client. But what about for larger teams on an enterprise workspace? For this second example, in larger organizations, there are tons of sites in a workspace we might want people to access, but also sites we don't want accessed. So if there's sensitive information or you work with someone like Grimer, who in real life, this is not a bit, Grimer repeatedly goes in and messes with certain sites, sites that have millions and millions of visitors. I do frequently go in and mess with, I very slightly add a transform, a little rotation on major headings on several production sites. With site-specific access on enterprise workspaces, you can control which members have access to certain sites in the workspace. Meaning I can go in and make sure Grimer only has access to the sites he needs. I can protect my sanity and my business can protect sensitive sites and trade secrets. Jay-Z? Site-specific access can be granted to anyone in your workspace, whether they're full members or invited agency or freelancer guests. We're adding more and more controls to configure workspaces to not only enable collaboration where it's helpful, but in some cases to disable collaboration when it's not. This is super critical in major production environments where you want to decrease access risk or security risk. So we've covered guest role. We've talked about site-specific access for freelancers and agencies, as well as for larger teams. Now I'm really excited to share the third feature in collaboration, something enterprise customers have been asking for for a really long time, and that's page branching. Page branching allows multiple designers to work on separate designs in parallel. Sada? Grimer and I are working on documentation on our site for Webflow University. Wait a sec, didn't you site-specific access me out of everything? Access changed? He should be good now. In this site, I'm working on the design, but here's the thing. While I'm updating the documentation design here, I need Grimer to work on another page. With page branching, Grimer can now create a branch for that page. My screen is on the left and Grimer's is on the right. And now he can design on that branch. And it is not just editing content, but while I work, he can also do actual design work. He can create new classes, change element ordering, modify content, and even make changes to style and layout on that new class. I'm making so many changes. Oh, got some more people here. We got Meg, we got Marley and Mackenzie and Skylar. Vlad, I don't, I don't know what Vlad is doing in this design. It's like 15, no? 16 people working on the site at once. Uh, I'm done with my changes. When someone is done with all their work, I can choose to go in, 
merge his changes, and when I'm ready, I publish Webflow University. Jay-Z. We're so excited about how teams are working together to create and ship some of the most powerful sites out there. And we can't wait to see what you build next. Now, back to the stage at WebflowConf. So, three things we covered, of course, in collaboration superpowers. Agency or freelancer guest role. Uh, this is, of course, shipping later this month. We have site-specific access for agency and freelancer guests, as well as for members on enterprise teams. That's shipping in early 2023. And page branching for enterprise customers and enterprise partners. That's shipping today. So that's it for collaboration superpowers, at least for today. I'm super excited to take us to our third category, of course, community superpowers. With that, I'm very excited to welcome up Webflow's Director of Community, Emily Lineto. Thanks so much, McGuire. So community has been at the core of Webflow since the very beginning. And that's led to a couple things. One, we've seen the community become an extension of our team, many of which allowing us to build together, to get candid feedback, sometimes really candid feedback. But more importantly, it's also led to opportunities for us to build and work with some incredible people. And while we know that a lot has happened in the last few years to really challenge how we as a community operate, we've started to really see things totally update where teams who are used to working in an office suddenly became distributed, where we saw events, they've moved online like meetups or conferences or even the way that we hung out. And suddenly things that once felt so important weren't, and it forced a priority shift. And despite all of these changes, that human need for creativity, for connection, and most importantly, community, became more critical than ever. And for many, people stood up and decided that now was the time. Now was the time to think about what felt totally out of reach and realized that it wasn't. People jumped to full-time freelancing careers. They joined agencies. They found new communities. They even gained other means of financial independence. And some even found the time to simply just slow down and learn something. Or if you're literally me, just play an obscene amount of Sims 4. <laughs> so how did this affect the Webflow community? Well, 11 years ago, this was the Webflow community. Uh, and, you know. <laughs> Today, people all over the world are building in Webflow. Freelancers, agencies, businesses like Lattice, Greenhouse, Discord, and global organizations like the New York Times, PwC, NCR, TED, Yahoo, and of course, Tinder for fish. And not to mention the countless students and educators all over the world from Harvard, MIT, University of Toronto, and all the way over to Oxford, using Webflow for free through the Webflow for Classrooms program. But that's not all. This year alone, the community has created over 3 million sites in Webflow. And that's done a ton. We've seen people connect online, others in person, hundreds of events, meetups, and entire virtual communities have flourished, like Floxies and Flow Party, to, well, No Code North, Tech Junior, Webflow Cafe, and of course, State of Flow and Reloom, just to name a few. And even today, we're joined live by tens of thousands of people from over 61 countries all around the world. And now we know showing up doesn't just mean celebrating the wins with the community. It's also about understanding how we can step up to really empower more, empower others. And there's a lot that we're doing there, but today I want to talk about two things specifically. First, 
community grants. So with community grants, we have unlocked $10 million to invest directly into the community. And through this program, we've had the opportunity to look into how can we better support for those that are creating courses, for workshops, hosting community events, and building impactful curriculum. Or for some, even just investing in more people that are gonna help build the future of the web. So with that, I am thrilled to announce some of the very first recipients of the grants, starting with ADP List and Useful School, who are doing incredible things to empower more designers through mentorship and curriculum. <laughs> and of course, next, Tech Junior and No Code Kids, who are doing so much to empower the next generation of builders by empowering students. <laughs> and of course, last but not least, we have the Great Design Lead Podcast. We have No Code North, and we have Floxies, who are doing everything in their power to empower each other and the broader Webflow community. And the best part about all of this is that we are only just getting started. I strongly encourage checking out these recipients and a few more that are gonna be coming out very, very soon. And of course, if there's something that you have top of mind, something that you feel is gonna be able to impact that next generation, head over to webflow.com slash grants and please do apply. So, that's grants. And now, the second thing. And this is something that's entirely new, something that we've been waiting for for quite some time, and that is the Webflow Marketplace. <laughs> the Webflow Marketplace is the all-new home for all Webflow products and services. So what's the goal here? Well, we wanted to take everything, all that creativity, all the expertise, and all of the opportunities that are being generated by those building businesses on Webflow and put them in one simple place. So let's talk about how. So we've taken templates made in Webflow and experts, and we've brought them all together into one brand new place. And through this, we're gonna be able to centralize how people can explore, how they can find those opportunities, how they can find inspiration. And to show off what that's gonna look like, let's first take a look over at templates. So for templates, this is actually one of the very first places where people go to find inspiration, to learn, to maybe just get started. But it's also an incredible opportunity for template creators everywhere to monetize their deep Webflow expertise. And today, there are over 5,000 Webflow templates available, with top creators making upwards of $100,000 a year, with one making $1 million last year alone. <laughs> That's a lot more than me. <laughs> and what marketplace? Templates are becoming even more discoverable, simply by making the sheer fact that everybody is going to one place making it easier for web floors to find that perfect template. And of course, for template creators, making it even easier to build and grow their businesses. So with that, that's templates. But you may be thinking, what about clonables? So just to set the stage here, there are over 15,000 clonables in Made in Webflow today. Things that you can open up, you can see how they're built, clone them, use them for whatever. And now, when we launched our updated Made in Webflow earlier this year, we said that we were building the critical foundation for a lot of new things to come, one of which we are launching tomorrow called Creator Profiles. With that, the goal is simple. We wanna make it easier for you to start branding the way that you show up within the community with a streamlined view of all of the information from followers to important links to projects, your own updated URL, and of course, trying to make it easier for people to get in contact with you. But there's so much more. 
And in order to show that off, I want to move things over into experts. So when we first launched experts, we wanted to make it easy for people to partner with highly skilled creators in the community. And through this, we've introduced a ton of new ways for certified experts to build their brands, their businesses, and ultimately connect with prospective clients. And as the Webflow experts, as well as the community itself has grown, we have seen a ton of new ways, new opportunities, but also we've heard that it could be daunting. It could be a daunting task to find the correct expert, the one that you want to work with, the one that fits. Often having to reach out to multiple experts, a manual back and forth, only to see who's compatible, which obviously isn't the best experience for either users or experts in the program. So let's talk about how we're going to solve that. And that moves us into matchmaking. So with this, we have now moved the directory directly into Webflow experts. And, or we have now moved the experts directory directly into the marketplace, making it easier for people to now see all of the different things, as well as we have also updated the way that our experts show up within the marketplace, making it easier for you to choose and customize what your profile looks like, and of course, making it much easier for you to show up how you want to as an expert in our community. And of course, with that, it's going to make it easier to find the expert that they need, make that compatible moment, and lead to that ultimate match, much like how we've seen with Tinder for fish. <laughs> so what does that look like? Let me show you. So with matchmaking, we are taking the guesswork out of trying to find and match with a expert in our community. And we start by asking them a few simple questions from their project scope, their timelines, their budget. And we recommend up to seven experts for them that are well suited to take on that job. Not only does this give clients the ability to choose from multiple experts all in one place, but it also makes it a lot easier to send off and evaluate different options all in one spot. And the best part, all of this is made available today. But we're not done yet. Finally, I am excited to share a brand new marketplace category, and that's apps launching today in beta. It's no secret that her community is creative. They push the limits of what's possible in design and also the limits of our platform. And apps is one step towards making what was once impossible possible, and for many, even easy. And apps allow us to unlock third-party functionality that extend and enhance Webflow's core capabilities, allowing users to add to their site, to take advantage of new functionality, and some may even say boost their powers within Webflow. And with apps listed now in the marketplace, you'll be able to discover any app that you need anytime, and you're going to be able to do that very, very soon. So <laughs> starting today, you'll be able to access powerful apps built by some of the earliest members of the Webflow community, names that many of you have already grown to know and love. And they're going to allow you to do incredible things, from unlocking powerful e-commerce workflows to allowing you to add filtered search to your site in just a few clicks to apps that even allow you to better collaborate with your teams. And all of this built by community members who are superpowers in their very own right, like Monto and WhaleSync, JetBoost, and of course, no code Linux. And the best part, this is just the beginning. Starting today, you can easily find and install verified apps directly from the Webflow marketplace in your site allowing you to create all sorts of stuff throughout your site from collections, products, workflows, and more. We are so incredibly thrilled, not only by what our community is building, but how they're showing up to support each other. And there's still so much left to be done. 
but through programs like grants and new features like the product marketplace, the future is looking even more creative, collaborative, and within reach. And that's community superpowers. Back over to you, McGuire. All right, next is super superpowers. First is something we're calling Webflow Libraries. And this is incredible. For the longest time, if you're wanting to build custom layouts in Webflow, you'd usually start in one of three ways. One, you'd build the layout from scratch. Two, you'd buy a template and modify that layout. Or three, you'd find something you like on Made in Webflow. You'd see how it's built, maybe clone it or copy and paste layouts to your Webflow site. So, whether we're looking to drop in a custom layout directly into our site, or we're wanting to learn how does Reloom or how does FinSuite maintain their class structures, we're bringing the power of the Webflow community, all that expertise and creativity that comes with that community, right into the Webflow designer. And that's what libraries are all about. And it works like this. If we go to the ad panel, Here's all our elements, our different nodes. If we go to layouts, we of course see our starter library. These are pre-built layouts that anyone can use. They're included automatically. But at any time, we can press this button. And of course, we are taken to the Webflow Marketplace, where we can explore entire libraries of custom layouts by some of the top Webflow creators. And when we add a library, it gets added to our site. And of course, we can see that added library here. And of course, we can use it right away. Speaking of which, Let's see libraries in action. All right. Here we are. Of course, we go over to our ad panel and go over to layouts. And we can see we have the combined library right here. Let's see what happens when we click on that. We can see all of our categories. We have gallery, blog, team, FAQ, clients, pricing, contact, tons of options here, even banners right here. Let's go down and take a look at nav bars. Let's find a nav bar we like. So you can see a live preview, of course, as you hover over each of these, so you can kind of see what each of these headers look like. Let's grab a nav bar, and let's put it right at the top inside the body. And just like that, we have a nav bar. That's it. You can add anything from, so if we want to go ahead and go to our layouts, we can go to the combined library. We can say, we want to add a blog element. We could do that. We can add a blog, let's say, right under Let's put it above the nav bar for design creativity and then put the nav bar back on top. <laughs> and of course, the really great thing about this is because we're respecting and because we're using the class structure that the library creator used, we can go ahead and make modifications. So if we're using combined text size small, combined text size regular, et cetera, we can change something on any one of them. And of course, it will change on multiple. So that's libraries in an existing site. But that is not all. What about? the other side of things. Let's take a look at this. What about creating a library? If you ask our software developers, if you ask our software developers, even simple things, let alone complex layouts, they require a ton of time to get right. There's a lot of code that's written and a lot of code that's tested to make sure you never, ever have to worry about writing or testing code for even complex stuff. With libraries, we're bypassing all of that because the creator experience for libraries isn't based on writing code to build a layout. That's because a Webflow site you create becomes the source of truth, which means anyone who can build layouts in Webflow can create a Webflow library. So we asked Sara and our design team to create an exclusive library, something we've been cooking up, something they've been working on for not much time because they had to prep it quickly for this demo. But I gave them three parameters, three parameters for this. One, it had to be good. And if you know Sada and you know her team, you know this is a given. Two, it had to be pink. And three, it had to honor legendary Webflow video lead and Jigglypuff superfan, Stacey Hahn. <laughs> so they got right to work and created this Webflow site. And it's just a Webflow site. But because they're using the library's creator experience, they can create components for each layout in the library. They can add the right metadata. And when they submit, they'll go ahead and get it reviewed and hopefully approved. And that is how a library is born. So let's see that library in action. All right, blank site. 
That's OK, because libraries. Let's go in to layouts. And you can see right here we have the Stacy Land Library. Let's click in. Tons of pink. We got it. That's our, that's our second checkbox. It's good. Let's make sure by dragging in some stuff. Let's drag in some navigation. So let's use navigation 2. That looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and add some more stuff. Let's go and add, say, gallery section. This one looks OK. There we go. Gallery dragged right in. Let's add something else, too. Layouts, Stacy Land Library. Let's do a footer. And we'll put the footer, of course, right at the bottom. Or if we want to be really different, let's put the footer at the top <laughs> and then hit undo, because that's a terrible idea. All right, so just like that, we've put this together. But check this out. Like we showed in the first one, this is using WF text medium. Again, everyone might use different class structures. That's OK. Choice is a very good thing here. And that means, of course, we can modify one of these. So if we change the size, let's make it obscene, go really large on this. Of course, it's affecting anything that's using that class. So it, it respects the class structures that library creators are choosing. But that is libraries in Webflow, of course. Of course, this means you can build beautiful sites with some of the best practices from the start. You can learn and explore how some of the best creators out there build their layouts. There's over 1,000 layouts available today, 18 libraries, including Stacy Land, which is an exclusive release, which will go off the marketplace on November 14th. And the creator experience we showed is in development right now. So sign up for the waitlist so you can join the library creator experience as soon as that becomes available. But that is libraries. But this is just the first super superpower, because I'm really excited for the second super superpower to pass it back to Vlad. Thank you, McGuire. We're running a little behind, so please bear with us. Um, I can't wait to see what you all build uh, with libraries. And I want to send a huge thank you to all of the Webflow creators who partnered with us uh, on this launch, and of course, all the Webflow teammates who made it happen and helped build it. To me, this shows how Webflow's community is in itself a super superpower. All of you here today, whether you're sharing work through Made in Webflow, or selling templates on our marketplace, or a part of our experts directory, or if you're building these new libraries, you're helping create a really rich ecosystem of building blocks for others to use to dramatically speed up their projects. But one thing we haven't talked much about is um, just the importance of developers in the Webflow ecosystem. I know what you're saying, like, what's this no-code guy saying, talking about developers for? But it's developers like Chris Spaggs who turned JetBoost from just an idea that was sparked by helping a friend with a job listing website to an entire company that now has multiple products, runs on thousands of production Webflow sites, generates tens of thousands of monthly recurring revenue, and like Emily mentioned earlier, is now available directly in our apps marketplace. And there are tons of companies like JetBoost building on top of Webflow, from FinSuite to Refocus, to MemberStack, to WhaleSync, to Reloom, the list goes on and on and on. But something we know from speaking to developers like Chris and others is that building apps on top of Webflow today can be really challenging. The resources and tools that we've historically provided for developers have left a lot to be desired. And it's not a secret that our APIs have not gotten a lot of love over the years. That's why today, I'm really excited to introduce our second super superpowers, tons of new developer resources. Today, we're launching an all-new developer site with a lot of new resources that developers can use to extend and improve Webflow. On the new developer site, you'll find interactive API documentation, guides for building and launching your own apps in the marketplace, SDKs and code examples to help you build faster, and new support channels to get API updates and have a, our team help you along the way really closely. You can find all of that at developers.webflow.com, which is going live right after this keynote as we speak. So that's what's available today. But this is really only the beginning of a much bigger ongoing investment into improving our APIs and developer tooling. 
We've staffed an entire awesome team to focus on developer enablement. And throughout the following months, we'll be releasing many more updates and improvements to our APIs to make extending, extending and integrating with Webflow much better and much more streamlined. This means extending our API surface with richer APIs around sites, pages, custom code, content, and, and really much, much more, as well as improvements in how users manage apps throughout their workspaces and projects. And ultimately, our goal is to help foster the creation of thousands of new integrations and apps, companies just like JetBoost making a huge difference in our community. Because the more code power building blocks we have, the more apps that blossom around Webflow's ecosystem, the more power that millions of people will have at their fingertips to build incredible experiences for the web. So libraries was our first super superpower. Brand new developer resources and API investments is our second. And for the third and final super superpower, I'm going to pass it over to Bryant at Webflow HQ. So back in 2013, Vlad, Sergi, and I were scrambling to get Webflow out for the very first time. And it was honestly a very trying time because we were under time pressure and we we're also trying to implement all the designs that Sergi had for myself and Vlad in near record time. And honestly, there was just so much back and forth that I just really wanted Sergi to actually go out and build our core application on his own. And it got to a point where I really wanted to pull out his hair. And this is why we built DevLink. It allows you to take the components that you've built in Webflow and bring it to a variety of different development environments. And we're starting with React. So let's open up the Webflow Designer. And what you see is this is a weather app that has components such as a sidebar, a top nav, the seven-day forecast, and the current weather conditions. And we're actually using text overrides here because we want this data to change later. And what you'll notice is that this is an application. It's not like what you typically see in Webflow, which is a marketing website, a blog, or a CMS, or a directory. This looks and feels like an application that a developer would write from scratch. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up a new modal to open up DevLink. And we've actually built an NPM package that allows us to talk to Webflow through the terminal. And we support several different commands. And I'm going to go and copy the first command over here. And I'm going to paste that command over to my terminal. And what this is doing is that it's pulling down all of the components that live in Webflow into my local file system. If I open up my VS Code, what you'll see is there's a new folder now in my Next.js project called DevLink. You'll see all the files here. And these are all the components that you've built in your Webflow project. This is a JavaScript file, and this is a CSS file. And the CSS that appears here is only the CSS that is used in that particular component. Just in the same way that Webflow outputs production-ready HTML and CSS, DevLink compiles production-ready React components. And they're written just in the same way a developer would write them. So now let's take these React components and let's start to wire them up in our React app. And what we have here is a very simple Next.js React app. And I've already added some of the basic scaffolding in here. But what we can do is we can start wiring up the different slots that we've created. And we're going to add those Webflow components into those slots. Brian, are you going to explain what you're doing? No. <laughs> and for our main component, what we're going to do is that we're actually going to drop in nested components. And we're actually going to utilize the live data that we're actually using from a remote weather API. And we're going to plug them into the React components as props. So what you see here, day of the week, temp, high, low, those are actually the text overrides that we specified in our Webflow project for that component. So we'll add our final component, which is the current forecast. And that's also using the live data. And if we come over here, we'll see that the hover effects, the interactions, the dropdowns, they're all working now, but in my React app. Well, let me show you something else. Let's say you wanted to play around with the design a little bit. So we've actually built another feature called link. And let me copy that command and drop it in our terminal. 
So now let's start making some changes to our design. Let's maybe select this card. And maybe let's give this temperature a little bit more breathing room. And what you're seeing is that as I'm designing, the changes are actually propagating over to my React environment. So change things like the background color, um, maybe a color less unsavory. And let's actually try to give this card a little bit more pop. So let's try to give it an interaction. We're going to go and give it a mouse move animation, select this one we've already built, and maybe change the smoothing effect a little bit. Let's try it out. And what you see with Link is that all those interactions, style changes, hover effects, are being also propagated over live in real time into my local development environment. So that's DevLink. Let's pass it back to the stage at WebflowConf. Thank you. Thank you, Bryant. I uh, wasn't quite sure how you all were going to uh, react to that. Um, you can all apply for early access to DevLink, uh, the developer preview at webflow.com forward slash DevLink. All right, that was a lot. So let's quickly recap all the superpowers we covered. In development superpowers, we saw how scaling our CMS for larger sites, larger e-commerce stores, and larger membership experiences is available today. We saw variable font support for topography and interactions landing in beta next month. More powerful component capabilities available today, which you'll hear about more in a bit. And native multi-language support with APIs to connect to translation partners coming next year. In collaboration superpowers, we saw guest role and site-specific access landing early next year. And of course, uh, guest role coming in a few weeks, uh, as soon as next week. And of course, page branching that's available today on our enterprise plans. That's a lot of stuff. And in community superpowers, we saw some of the early stories from community grant recipients, new creator profiles rolling out tomorrow, the uni unified marketplace that brings together Webflow resources and services in one place, new experts matchmaking to help bring companies and service providers together, and the launch of our beta for apps to make extending your Webflow projects easier. And in super superpowers, we have libraries available in beta today to bring tons of powerful layouts community-built layouts directly into the designer, and a much deeper investment into developer tooling and APIs. And of course, Brian showed DevLink, which starts to bring what, you can bring what you can build in Webflow to be used directly by developers. Finally, yes, actually, let me, uh, yes. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. It's all, it's all the Webflow team that made this happen and this community. And with that, I really, really want to thank all of you, whether you're here in San Francisco in person or joining us remotely from across the world from so many countries. Thank you for being part of the Webflow community. Webflow would not be the same without you. I want to thank all the sponsors, the partners, creators, ecosystem companies, and event staff who helped make this event a reality. There's a lot of work that goes into this. And of course, I want to share my deep, deep gratitude for the entire Webflow team. There's so many, there's quite a few folks in this room uh, who have helped work on all the things that, tirelessly work on all the things that uh, we're announcing and bringing to you today, and to help all of you succeed. And we still have a ton of hard work ahead of us. And I can't even believe I'm saying this, but next, next year in August, we'll be celebrating the 10-year anniversary of Webflow's launch. And to see thousands of people here with us, I still firmly believe that we're at the very beginning of our journey to transform how we all built for the web. So enjoy the rest of the conference, everyone, and have an amazing next two days. <laughs>